So these days, most big blockbuster movies and franchises have post-credit teases. Marvel is really the one that established this, and for a while they were the masters of the post-credit tease. Oh, it was a beautiful thing! But for their last few movies, their post-credit teases have overshadowed the movies themselves because the movies weren't that good. But anyway, some of you might be already typing, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 did not have a big post-credit tease because it's unlikely that Marvel is going to keep that team lineup. Uh, and the reason that Guardians of the Galaxy didn't have a big tease at the end was because it's the end of the gun era at Marvel. And here's where things get interesting. The reason The Flash doesn't have a big post-credit tease is because it's the beginning of the gun era at DC. So the end of gun and the beginning of gun. It's right there in the middle of all the drama. Uh, let's see if it works out for him. Uh, and Peter Safran's there somewhere. Yoo-hoo, Peter, where are you? Oh, there he is. Uh, he's there. Just ain't nobody paying attention to him. But he's not really doing anything to garner any attention. And I, I suspect that's intentional. Uh, so anyway, let's break down the ending of The Flash, what the post credit scene sets up and leaves open to interpretation. But first, where I want to start is the post credit scene that almost was. All right, so I've told you a little bit about this before, and I'm sure you've heard it a couple of other places at this point, uh, but let's just break it down all in one spot. Uh, just, let's just put a, put, a, put a button on it. So you see, before Gunn and Saffron took over DC and before Ezra Miller's meltdown, simpler, well, it's amazing. We thought that was bad. Look how bad things have gotten now. Uh, you know, with all this, just this, there was, there used to just be Snyderverse drama. Oh, more, more, even more. So the original ending of The Flash was that, as I told you, was that in the new timeline created by Barry saving his father, Michael Keaton's Batman and Sasha Kaye's Supergirl were back. And there's plenty of behind the scenes photos of them filming at that courthouse filming location. Uh, and they would be part of the main DC continuity with Michael Keaton already signed and having filmed uh, playing, playing Batman in the HBO Max Batgirl movie, which Zaslav would go on to shelf for a tax write-off. And probably also, the reason they also probably got rid of it is because they had decided not to keep Keaton. So it would have been confusing to have him in this whole new movie. Uh, so if Michael Keaton, but in this original ending, if Michael Keaton is the new Batman, where's Batfleck? Well, Andy Muschietti, Ezra Miller, Ben Affleck, and Walter Hamada had not only dreamed up, but had filmed. They'd made it a reality. A post-credit tease where Ben Affleck's Batman reaches out to Barry, a reversal of what happened in Batman v Superman, with Batfleck asking Barry to use his powers to come find him as Batfleck is lost in the multiverse. Oh, now that's a post-credit tease. Uh, and they'd filmed that, and it was going to be included with the film. The search for Batfleck was probably going to be Flash 2, the Flash 2, uh, which everyone at Warner Brothers was pretty bullish about because the movie was looking so good and everything was going so well. But then it went horribly. Everything imploded. Miller had a mental breakdown right at the end of production and disappeared, uh, only to resurface months later in Hawaii exhibiting disturbing behavior. What's more, there were some pretty serious allegations then made against Miller about a young woman in their entourage. Uh, Toby Emmerich then got replaced, replaced. Uh, back when Batgirl was shelved, Walter Hamada could see the writing on the wall and said, I'm, I'll, I, you can't fire me, I quit, and resigned. And then, in a brutal move that blindsided the star of their big DC movie at the time, right after its opening weekend, James Gunn and Peter Safran got the DC gig. So, what were they going to do about The Flash? Not only did every suit who saw it feel it was a great film, heck, even I think it's a great film, but the studio had spent over $200 million to make it, far more than the $90 million that was spent on Batgirl. So even with all of Miller's controversy, Warner Brothers Discovery decided to try and roll the dice and see if they could release the film, with Miller keeping a very low profile during the entire ad campaign. In fact, Miller only showed up at the end at the LA premiere, the film's only premiere, instead of the usual global tour for a movie of this size. Uh, and there, Miller gave a short speech where instead of thanking the fans, as many actors in a film like this would do, Miller focused almost entirely on studio executives. Not just those that had, put, or, and creatives, not only those who had cast him in the role, he thanked the Snyders, but he was thankful, he said he, he, said he name-checked Warner Brothers Discovery head David Zaslav, new heads of Warner Brothers film Mike DeLuca and Pam Abdi, as well as the new heads of DC, James Gunn 
and Peter Safran, surely in an effort to get to stay. At this point, though, Miller's fate lies almost entirely up to the box office, which right now is looking iffy. I mean, the movie could always get a reprieve on digital and or streaming, but it's going to be a major blow if it's a box office bomb. Uh, however, though, the post credit scene of The Flash does keep Miller in play. And interestingly, it features Miller and Jason Momoa's Aquaman, the two soldiers for Warner Brothers and Discovery through all the Snyderverse drama who, what do you know, happened to be the only two to show up for James Gunn's Peacemaker season finale. Oh, I don't think that's a coinky dink So the basic idea is that because uh, Barry changed the timeline yet again and likely won't undo it because it would put his father back in jail, uh, and doing so, by the way, doesn't seem to have un unraveled the entire multiverse like uh, letting his mom live did. What's with that, what, right? I mean, I guess because his father didn't die, but I mean, that seems uncool. Uh, but anyway, uh, he, it seems that he's willing to live with the changes of keeping his father out of prison. Uh, it's like, what? Are, well, I mean, you, he, literally, the other thing would have, saving his mother would have wiped out the into all, the, all the multiverses. Uh, all right, so anyway, so now Barry finds himself in the Clooneyverse. Uh, is this the new DCU uh, under Gunn and Saffron? I think there was a possibility of that early on, but now that Gunn and Saffron have decided to go their own way, this Barry is stuck in the Clooneyverse. That's what you get, where he's got a Jason Momoa Aquaman to keep him company. Uh, it's because it's not established if that's our Jason Momoa Aquaman, who still has a big movie coming up. You don't know if that's our Jason Momoa Aquaman. Uh, because while Batman might have changed, you know, who was playing him from multiverse to multiverse, Barry stayed the same. And so, yeah, Arthur Curry was a dog in the Michael Keaton verse, but maybe in the Clooney verse, he's still Jason Momoa. And who is he in the gun verse? Is he another Aquaman? Or maybe in the gun verse, he's Lobo. And this whole multiverse ripple thing could explain why he's able to be Logo in the gun verse. But he's still Aquaman somewhere in the vast DC multiverse. This seems a little bit confusing to me. Uh, I think, you know, I get it. Although, I, I don't know. I still think they should have done a hard reboot. But let's see if this works for them. Same for Miller, by the way. A version of Barry, again, potentially played by Miller, could certainly show up in the Gunverse, as Gunn, has, Gunn so far has not discussed the Flash in any of uh, his upcoming projects. So he hasn't made any uh, concrete plans for the Flash. And Miller did help him out with uh, Peacemaker. It was a big deal for Gunn to have uh, a Justice League cameo of sorts at the end of Peacemaker. And he wouldn't have been able to do that without Momoa and uh, Miller. Uh, so let, let's let's just see how bad the box office is. And hey, if by some miracle the Flash does amazing at the box office, or as I said, turns out to be a hit on digital and or streaming, you don't have to even use Miller in the Gunverse. You could just do another Clooneyverse situation where this time Ezra Miller's Flash teams up with Clooney's Batman. Uh, it could be a running gag. He's always next to a Batman of some kind. Uh, it could be something totally separate from the Gunverse, not only to keep things simple, does it? Uh, but also to not contaminate what Gunn is doing. The point is, The Flash, much like Wanda, and rumor has it Deadpool, is now established as a multiversal character, played by Miller or not played by Miller, uh, either way. Just like it's inconsistent over at Marvel as well, as to you know whether or not you need to use the same actor or not. Uh, I, the consistency, I think, is important, but uh, nobody's doing it. And these universes, the Snyderverse, the Michael Keatonverse, the Reevesverse, uh, the, the, the Reverse, the Clooneyverse, and soon the Gunverse have now all been set up by the very big climax of The Flash, at least for comic book fans who I think can follow this, general audiences might find it a little confusing. What did you think? But they've set up a situation where all these characters are now kind of in their own, they've been put away on the shelf. They're all compartmentalized and multiverses. And Gunn and Saffron can choose to visit them or not visit them. And any version of The Flash, played by anybody, could traverse them. Heck, Batfleck is surely still somewhere out there as well. And even if we never actually see him again, maybe we will like in a decade or something when they do another multiverse movie at DC, but Batfleck is, Batfleck is still forever a part of the DC legacy. So again, what do you think of this? What do you think of what they're trying to get away with? This is, I guess, when you think about it, it's almost the beginning of the soft reboot in action, right? Uh, what did you, so what did you think? What do you think of the ending you got? And what do you think of the ending you almost got? Share those thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.